Xin chào people. Hi. I will start with a question. Out of all of you, who wants to earn money here? Raise your hand. Who wants to earn money? You all want to earn money, right? That is the reason you are here, right? Now you tell me who wants to earn more money, double, triple than what you are earning right now. Raise your hand. Say yes. I can't hear. Please be loud. Say yes. I promise you people within next 20 minutes, you will learn something that will at least double your conversions, double your sales online. So are you ready? That's great. So I'll tell you a bit about myself. I am a digital marketing consultant. I provide consultations to MNCs worldwide, increase their business, create their branding, their sales and conversions. So I have run a lot of campaigns, different kind of campaigns for different kinds of companies reaching out to different kind of audiences. For that, I have run close to 6 million USD spends, which definitely have double, tripled, or even like 10 times of returns. My All of the campaigns, there have been lead generation, e-commerce sales, branding. I have also trained 2,000 plus people. All of the trainees are working successfully in their businesses or in their jobs. Now, I have also written a book that's a book for beginners, Google AdWords book. You also can get this book. I'll tell you how to get this. It's a great book if you are interested in learning Google AdWords and utilizing in your business. OK. There is another question that I have. Now, whenever there is a campaign that you have to run, there is sale that you have to make, or there is an affiliate offer that you have to do, what is the first thing that comes in your mind? Can anybody answer me? Who will answer? Anybody? Is anybody who can answer this? Will you answer? What is the first thing that comes in your mind? Oh, I, and I want to know uh, my uh, customer uh, search the at uh, search at what? Usually, whenever we have to run a campaign, whenever we think of, OK, this is the ad that we have to run, this is the product that we have to sell, we think about what kind of people we have to reach, what kind of ad we have to run. Do we have to use Facebook? Do we have to use Google? What to use? But we forget one thing, one very basic thing, that everything is controlled by brain, by psychology, right? Whenever we think about buying something, it's our brain that takes the final decision. True? So what we need to understand is psychology is what controls our decision. Psychology is what decides that this person will buy a product or not. It can be controlled, yes, in a positive way and negative way. So we as digital marketers need to understand that we can utilize this, we can understand this, and increase our conversions. So are you people with me to know how we can do that? I can't hear you. Great. So I'll give you an example here. Thank you. I'll give you an example here. Now, uh, whenever we have to do something, let's say I am getting fat, I want to go for jogging. Right? There's a change that I'm bringing in my life. Or I have to buy a car. That's another change that I'm doing in my life. So anytime I'm changing something in my life, I come across a fear. That is my decision, right? Will I benefit out of it? If I'm buying this car, will this car be beneficial for me? Will it run good? Is this value for money? Or what will people say about this? Am I a fool to buy this overpriced car? Or maybe this car doesn't suit me, right? So there's a change that we are doing. 
So whatever decisions we take, it's impacted by whatever is there changes, right? So the fear of taking wrong decisions, that is what stops us from doing a lot of things. True? Okay. Similarly, there is a decision that a person has to make, that your audience have to make to purchase your product or not. Now the fear for them is, will they get a good quality product? Is this value for money? Are they making the right decision or wrong decision? How you will be able to overcome that? How you will be able to go ahead of that fear and ensure that the person purchases your product? That's the reason there are some products which are given free. We all love free products, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. We all love free products no matter how costly it is, no matter how less price it is. It's not about money. It's about getting, it, getting to try that, getting to understand it before you invest your money. That overcomes the fear of change, that you don't have anything to lose. That's why we always have free trials for a lot of products. This overcomes the fear of change. This overcomes the question in their mind that, do they have to lose anything? Will they be taking a wrong decision? No, that's what it works for. Another question for you people. Now, when you people were in school, probably third or fourth standard, what if your teacher came and told you that you have failed a subject? How would you feel? Bad, right? Right? Now, what if the teacher told that not just you, 20 more students have failed? You will still feel bad about you? But that will be a bit better. You will feel a bit better. Am I right? Why does that happen? That's not changing your situation, right? You have still failed in that subject. That's when you understand that you are not alone. There are other people with you. There are other people who are in the same situation. You feel better. That's the reason we always use social proofs. You must have seen social proofs in a lot of ads online. It's clearly telling this ad, see why other 2,500 people are starting their own businesses. Or probably, their so-and-so players can't be wrong, play now. That gives an impact to the psychological aspect that you are not alone in this. If so many people have tried, you also can do that, right? So that's an example of how psychology comes into play and how it increases the conversions. Coming on to the next, how we can control that psychology. How we can ensure that this helps us get more conversions. Now, we'll talk a bit geek here. I'll tell how the brain works. Now, the brain is divided into three parts. First is reptilian brain, second is limbic brain, and third is neocortex. Yeah, it sounds like biology, but it's definitely not. Now, reptilian brain is responsible for the instinct, the instant decisions that we take, and survival, how a person survives. This is a part of brain that controls that. Another part is limbic brain that controls your emotions. Whatever emotions you have, how your life changes according to what emotion comes into your brain, this is the part that controls it. The last one is neocortex. This is for complex thinking, computing, and calculation. Now, if I ask you people, can you tell which part of brain will be controlling how people buy or what makes them buy? Can anybody take a guess? Can anybody take a guess? Nobody? Limbic? What do you say? <laughs> you say limbic. Anybody else? Limbic. Why? Because all purchases are decided by emotions? Is that what you're saying? Uh, sadly, it's wrong. It's reptilian. We all purchase things. We all buy things because of our instinct of survival. We purchase things because we have to survive the peer pressure. If my friend, if my neighbor purchases something great, there will be a thought in my mind that I have to survive this. 
That's the reason I'll buy. 10. Surviving the competition. If I'm running a business, my competitor is doing better. He is giving better product. I'll go out, buy better machines. I'll go out, buy some new technology. I'll buy some good talent so that I'll be better than him. Right? Then there is surviving the jealousy. If I'm jealous of somebody, I'll definitely buy something to overcome that. Surviving the trend. Fashion changes, we all buy new clothes, right? Why to survive the trend? Surviving the need. That's the most basic part. Whatever the need is, if I need to buy a new car, if I need to buy new shoes, I'll go and buy that. So all of the purchases in the world are directly or indirectly through the need of in the survival, through the instinct of survival. Now, how that works? How do we see that? This is utilized by only few brands, few companies in their ads. Now, how do we control that? I'll show some of the examples and tell you the pointers how to do that. The first thing is addressing the pain point. That's the most basic thing that we have to use. Addressing the pain point of our target audience. Right? Am I right? Great. So if we address the pain point of our audience, we will connect with them. The audience will be able to relate. They'll understand that, yes, this is what needs to be done. Now see this ad. It's about Uber, your ride on demand. People who don't want to use their cars or people who don't have cars have to travel. Isn't that their pain point that they can get their car anytime they want? Next, appeal to the self-centered nature. No matter how great a person is, there will always be a thought about himself or herself in the back of the mind. We always think about ourselves first. Even if it's one person, we will do that. See this ad. For some, it's Mount Everest. It stairs, right? So that makes us understand that we are doing better than most of the people. So this is feeding their behavior that, yes, we are better than other people. So that's how we can help the people who cannot do that. Demonstrate importance through contrast. How many of you have seen the slimming pills ad before and after? Nobody? We all have seen that, right? Why, why that works? Because they show the difference, what the person was before and what they have become. We have to show the contrast. We have to show what difference we can bring in their lives. How we can make things better for them. Show value tangibility. Showing the end result. Now see this, this is a car, right? A basic car. Now, this is for a lawyer which says this was his car. Now the woman is divorced and the car is hers. Showing the end result that she is living happily. Isn't that something that will motivate people? Not for divorce, for hiring this lover. Visual metaphor. We are, as humans, we are visually appealed people. We like what we see. Yes, we read, but what we see, any visual, any video, that impacts us more. Right? That's why we love watching videos. So whenever a visual metaphor is there, whenever there is a visual, it impacts us more. Now here it's about Diet Pepsi showing an Elephant, a fat elephant. Now this clearly shows even fat people can enjoy this. Coming to the next, emotional trigger. That's where emotion comes into play. We, in the reach to connect to people emotionally, we have to do a lot of things. That is the reason why there are always ads about kids and puppies. These are the two things which sell the most. Now in this ad, it clearly shows Michelin because so much is riding on your, right? So this is connecting, connecting to them emotionally, telling them, okay, that this is your kid. This can be your kid and for your kid's safety, you have to use this. Connecting emotionally ensures that the people understand it better, people relate to it better. I have another question for you people. Now... Whenever you go out to buy something, let's say you are going out to buy new shoes, 
what will you see so that you can decide, okay, this is the shoe that I have to buy? Who will answer? Anybody can raise hand who can answer? Who's there? I'll repeat the question. If you are going out to buy a shoe, what is one thing that will make you decide that? That you will choose this shoe, not the other shoe. Là cái cảm giác của tôi khi mà tôi đi thử trải nghiệm của tôi. Thường bao giờ tôi sẽ đi đôi đôi giày đấy vòng quanh ở trong shop, xong sau đó tôi mới ra quyết định. I'm sorry, I don't understand Vietnamese. Can anybody translate that for me? On, uh, around the, the shop and then I, I decide. So what, what makes you decide? The design, the price, the look? Uh, no. My, my, um, my experience uh, when I, I, I try it. So how you look when you wear that, right? So that's emotional aspect. Design is not important. Okay. So that's emotional aspect that comes into play. Is there anybody else who want to answer? I want at least three people to answer, please. Brand. Brand. How, how does that impact you? Which brand it is? Um, so let's say you are buying a Nike. If I tell don't buy Nike, yeah, yeah. buy Reebok. How for, does that impact you? You feel better with that? Uh, because of, for sales, uh, I usually use uh, Nike. Okay, that's good. So you are connected to that brand emotionally. Another person who thinks emotionally. Do you want to answer? No, no. Oh, great. Anybody else? I just need one more person to answer. Just one more person. Can you answer? No, I'm not sure. I think it's um, feeling. Feeling. Wow. Three people who think emotionally. Isn't there anybody who thinks that price also matters? Nobody? Many people, right? Why does that happen? I mean, some people think emotionally, some people think rationally. How, how will we tackle that? We as digital marketers, how will we tackle that? We are showing our ads to thousands of people every day. We cannot differentiate that for this set of people, we will tackle emotionally. For this set of people, we will tackle rationally. We have to do both, right? How, how do we do that? There is a basic concept by which we can overcome that and ensure that our conversions increase and no matter what is the person's thought, if they are thinking through heart, through their feelings, or thinking rationally that the price is right, it's logical, we will do that. Sound? It's a small video. Psychologists know that there are two systems in our brains, the rational system and the emotional system. Jonathan Haidt, who's a psychologist at NYU, came up with a great analogy for these two systems. He said, think of your brain as a human rider atop an elephant. The rider represents the rational system. That's the part of us that plans and problem solves. The rider might do some analyzing and decide, hey, I want to go that way. But it's the elephant representing the emotional system that provides the power for the journey. The rider can try to lead the elephant or drag the elephant, but if these two ever disagree, who would you bet on? The elephant has a six ton weight advantage, and it's exactly that power imbalance that makes adopting new behaviors very hard. If you want this duo to head a new direction, you also need to think about the path which represents the external environment. This duo is more likely to complete a journey if you can shorten the distance and remove any obstacles in their way. So bottom line, if you want to lead change, you've got to do three things. Give direction to the rider, knowledge of how to get to the destination. You've got to motivate the elephant, which means tapping into emotion. 
And finally, you need to shape the path to allow for easy progress. That's how change happens. A very simple concept. An elephant, strong, so heavy elephant. It's controlled by its emotions, right? Cannot think like humans, right? It's an animal. So that's the part where emotion comes into play. Then there is a rider which is sitting on the top, thinking he can control the elephant, but he definitely cannot if the elephant goes crazy, right? So how do we utilize this thing in our marketing? There are three steps to which we are able to do that. The first step is directing the rider. The rider is the brain, our logical thought. Like the rider sitting on the elephant who has to be cautious all the time, who has to think that the elephant should not hit anybody, the elephant should go in the right direction, the elephant should perform the right task. So his all thought process is about logical thinking, right? So similarly, whatever ads we run, whatever campaign do we do, we have to put in the logical explanation of things. We have to make people understand that whatever they will decide, whatever change we are telling them to do is logically good for them. Then there is second, motivating the elephant. Like elephant, it's our heart, emotional aspect. Like I asked people about what makes them buy the shoes. People told that I'll see how it will look. So that's another emotional aspect. I'll feel emotionally good. Similarly, that's the elephant who is controlled through emotions. In our ads, in our campaigns, we have to put in emotional aspect as well because everybody does not think by brain all the time. At times, it's our emotion which controls everything. Then the last thing, shaping the path. What is the path? What, the path is definitely a way to reach out to the destination. And what is the destination for our ads? Sales, right? Please be loud. Great. So shaping the path is telling the person that in order to make a purchase, in order to do a change, be it lead generation, be it sales, this is the path they have to take. So that's the call to action which comes into play. Our each ad, each campaign should have a clear, definite call to action. I'm sure you all know that, right? Great. Now see this example, a very simple example of an ad run by Hootsuit. This ad is talking about emotional benefit, it's talking about rational benefit, also showing the social proof. So for all kind of people who think by their brain, who think by their heart, who are scared to make any kind of changes, this ad addresses all of them. Right? Is this ad good? So these are the things that we have to keep in mind. These are the things that we have to understand whenever we try to run any kind of campaign, any kind of strategy we are creating for our store or any other kind of brand. Brain is what will ensure that your audience purchases. You have to work on their psychology. You have to work on how they think. And to know that, you have to understand your target audience. These are some of the numbers for the store that I'm running right now, working on this strategy. So this is few months of sales. This is the store visits, and this is the repeat customers. This is just five months sale that I've got by working on this strategy strongly. Is this good? Can't hear you, good, bad, okay. Okay, that's ends, and this is how you can reach out to me. You can also join my Facebook group. That's a group where I share the ideas, concepts, and all experiments that I run. Any questions?
Guys, I would love to take a photo with you people. So can you please raise your hand? Thank you all.